Oh, man. <laughs> What's crazy is like, okay, good Burberry button up. We're not going to talk about that. Before becoming one of the biggest fascinations in the world of underground hip hop, thanks to some raunchy lyrics, chock full of punchlines and references to everything from basketball to pro wrestling and illicit money earned from scams. Well, the rapper Baby Tron, he was born James Johnson III on June 6, 2000 in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is a suburb located 30 minutes east of Detroit. Now, raised by his black father and white mother, utilizing language in creative ways, well, something you could say ran in the family. Now, after all, his father, he is the rapper known as Mr. Sadistic from Motown Range and his mother, well, she's actually an English teacher. Now, it was thanks to his dad that Tron's fascination with hip hop, it would take hold in the first place. Now, oftentimes when he was driving his son around town, well, he turned on the radio and exposed Tron to artists like Jay-Z, Nas, and Biggie, 50 Cent. Well, that was another one of Tron's early favorites. And he considers Get Rich or Die Trying to be an absolute classic. But rap music, it wasn't the only genre he had interest in throughout his childhood. Well, he also discovered an abundance of 80s pop music, something that would become his specialty when it came to picking the absolute right beat, the sample for his singles later on in life. Now, it didn't matter where he was or what he was doing at any given time, Tron always kept an ear out for a great sounding beat. He once told OK Player, Yeah, I definitely heard some of that shit in movies or just anything, hearing it, walking through the stores. By the time he was in middle school, well, Tron's favorite artist was Chief Keef, but he was also listening to local Michigan artists like Doughboys, Cash out and bread gang now that was also the age he decided to come up with his own stage name so to be honest well there's no big secret or anything behind his moniker and uh well no it's not influenced by megatron from transformers which was my guess i love them autobots he just wanted a cool handle to be known by and soon as he started rapping around the age of 12 well his friends began referring to him as baby tron which you know just seemed to fit the bill but before his desire to rap would truly take hold will tron flirted with the idea of becoming a professional basketball player. Now, he was always part of his school team, and while he wasn't quite old enough to remember the most recent Detroit Pistons championship from 2004, well, that franchise's success during his childhood will have played a big part in his love for the game. This is like... I was never no real hooper because shit, I was never six foot three. Now, unfortunately, while disagreements with his coaches in high school, they would lead to him leaving the team and dropping the sport. Now, what's ironic about the whole situation is that Tron, well, he would still become the most famous young person to ever represent his hometown outside of being an up and coming Memphis basketball star known as Imani Bates. Now, Imani and Tron, they both attended Lincoln High School where Bates won a state championship in 2019. That's the very same year that Tron graduated. Now, in those halls is where Tron, he formed his group of close friends and collaborators alongside Stan Will and TRD. Now, we informed Michigan Live that what made them click was so instantaneous, he stated. We were just different. At least we felt like we were different from the people who went to that school. We made a rap group, just hung out in our little circle. Starting in the 10th grade, while well, Baby Tron and his friends began pumping music out of the makeshift recording studio in Stan Will's bedroom closet. Now, shortly thereafter, well, they uploaded their stuff online and they became part of the growing rap scene in Detroit. Now, initially, Initially, a lot of their lyrics followed in the footsteps of scam rap artists, making music about hacked VPNs, stolen credit cards, and other fraudulent activities. Think of it like the Gen Z answer to the street hustles of the 80s and 90s. Now, it's also not something that Tron is ever embarrassed about. In fact, he told Rolling Stone, that's where I came from, scamming. So I still talk about it. It's like an origin. It's like me. I can't change me. Now, in all honesty, though, being labeled a scam rap artist is a bit misleading when it comes to Tron because a whole lot of his music displays his incredible expertise in everything from sports to old movies to finding creative ways to tell you that your partner probably isn't as interested in you as you think you are. In other words, well, scamming is just a small part of his personality. But back in 2018, well, it was front and center when Baby Tron and his crew, well, they dropped the first music video, Game Breaker. Now, after recording and releasing the song in senior year and getting a warm reception from friends, well, Baby Tron kept pushing and eventually began branching out on his own, making solo music while remaining an active member of uh, Shitty Boys. Why did that all fit together so weirdly? Anyway, Baby Tron's distinct quick delivery and slick punchlines coupled with his ability to rap over top any outlandish sample, well, they've since become his calling card. Now, the first solo single he ever dropped it arrived in 2019, and it was titled Cheat Code. But it was Jesus Shuttlesworth, a reference to the basketball movie He Got Game, that secured the first viral moment of Tron's career with nearly 2 million views for the music video on YouTube alone. From 
there, Tron continued to develop and refine his sound on projects like Ben Reaper, Sleeve Nash, and Luke Tronchek. Now, the last of those mixtapes they dropped in 2021, the same year that Tron would see a major shift in his talent as a rapper. Now, that's when his flow had steadied and slowed while his punchline became a little craftier as he developed a better understanding of style and cadence. Now, the first signs of this development, they began to show themselves in his official debut studio album, Megatron, which dropped in March of 2022 and marked Tron's first major label release as part of Empire. Now, it might have taken him five years, but baby Tron, he had finally hit the big time. Now, always someone with an unquenchable work ethic, well, baby Tron's 2022, well, it was just getting started. Now, not only would he release his second studio album, Bin Reaper 3 Old Testament, which would go on to earn his highest placement on the Billboard Hot 100, peaking at number 69. Well, he also dropped numerous singles like King of the Galaxy, in which he effortlessly hops from the beats of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal, to Nardo Wicks, Who Wants Smoke. Now, if you think shifting beats in mid-song is impressive, well, then you should probably check out one of his more recent efforts, Emperor of the Universe, where Baby Tron packs 21 verses into 21 different beats, like some type of sports car weaving between lanes on the highway. Now, with 2023 just about halfway through, well, don't be surprised if Baby Tron, he drops another project or two before the year is up, and currently he has an EP titled Six on the docket for release later this summer. Now, this non-stop release schedule is just one way this promising young rapper is ensuring he secures himself a spot in hip-hop infamy. And when looking towards his future, well, he told Michigan Live, it's about building a legacy and becoming a bigger legend. Whatever I've done, I'm trying to keep building and quadruple that in the next five years. Now, quadrupling is already a massive output is kind of mind-boggling to imagine, but if anyone is creative and prolific enough to do it, well, it's probably Baby Tron. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up this video here, but I do have a question for you. Do you prefer artists who constantly drop new music or the ones who take a bit more time to perfect each and every release? Basically, do you like Drake with the singles or Post Malone with the albums, right? I think that's fair. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. My name, of course, is Michael McCrudden, and uh, we've been dropping like an, a recent upload at the end of some of our new videos. So I think we have Chinese Kitty backloaded for you guys. If you missed that one, check it out. Another artist you're going to want to keep an eye on, and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom! I put it on for a G. Before she'd ring in the new year at the Barclays Center by performing alongside Future and 21 Savage, not to mention recent collaboratives with artists like Fivio Foreign and French Montana, well, female MC Chinese Kitty, she was born Taylor Hing on January 18th, 1995, in the neighborhood of Queens, New York. New Chinese Kitty was born into a family of Chinese and Guyanese descent, and while growing up in the city that never sleeps, well, both of her parents were worked in and around the music industry. Now, her father, Nitty, he worked behind the scenes with rappers like Fabulous, DJ Clue, and the Desert Storm crew, while her mother, Nikki, she worked as a stylist and fashion editor at The Source. Now, considering her parents had such a presence in the music industry from day one, well, it only makes sense that Taylor became determined to make her own way in the field as well. Now, she expanded upon the reasoning behind this decision where she told the Nocturnal, it paved the way for me and inspired me because I've been around it for so long. I've seen my dad work with so many artists that do things in the industry that I kind of already felt like I had to be in the music industry some way, somehow. In fact, one of Taylor's absolute favorite memories from her childhood was when she was only 10 years old and she was invited to a birthday party that T.I. had thrown for his own daughter because, well, they were both around the same age. That was the first time Taylor had ever been invited inside of a celebrity's home and once she got a taste of that lifestyle, well, she knew that it was meant for her. Now, it may have taken Kitty a little while to ultimately achieve her dreams, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. Now, her journey towards rap artists, it began when her mother introduced her to the music of Lil' Kim, which led her to discover other powerful female rappers like Nicki Minaj as well. Then as a child, Will Taylor, she would battle rap against her siblings to further develop her skill set. But she didn't get serious about making music until she had already established herself with an impressive social media following as both a bartender and a New York City it girl. I was, at first, I was in the nightlife. I used to bartend. Cool. So I started out in like a club called Starlets that a lot of people know. From there, Will Taylor, she entered the industry as a model and she transitioned in music videos, appearing next to artists like Young Dolph, Fabulous, and Ludacris. She also popped up on the cover of the August 2015 edition of Smooth Magazine. Now by that point, while her interest in modeling, it had began to wither. And following the birth of her son at the age of 20, Will Taylor became determined to finally accomplish her lifelong goal of becoming a rapper. Now Taylor Hing, she joined the cast of Love & Hip Hop Miami in season 
season one, she appeared alongside her mother. The two women, they went respectively by the monikers of Chinese Kitty and Chinese Nikki. Now, Taylor had actually dreamt that nickname up for herself as a social media handle at the age of just 16. Now, for those of you wondering, well, it's based off of her Chinese heritage and her love for an eyeliner that she used to use that people said, well, it made her look like a cat. Now, for most of that season, well, Kitty was caught in a crossfire between her castmates, Gabby Davis and Shay Johnson, while her mom did what she could to help her daughter out. At certain points throughout the season, well, Kitty would also team up with Lil Scrappy to kickstart her music career, which began with the release of her 2018 single, On Me. But it was the single she released a couple months later titled Kitty Walk, which was a remix of Rich the Kid's Plug Walk that really earned her some rave reviews. Heeding her mother's advice and motivated by the similar rise to fame of superstar Cardi B, well, Kitty decided to drop out of Love and Hip Hop Miami after the second season so that she could focus the bulk of her attention on her music career. On top of all this, she also decided to be finished with the bar scene. She explained to the Nocturnal, I was like, I can't live in the same lifestyle. I can't go bartend. I can't go do these things. Like it's not cute being just a cute face anymore. I wanted to put my foot down and go after what I really wanted in life. And that's why I decided to do music. Fed up with the nightlife, while Kitty used the industry connections she had made during her run on television to do a little maneuvering of her own. Now she set up her own studio sessions. She started working with a manager and she reached out to producer Hitmaker, which is also how she ended up on the remix to his track, Thought Box, alongside Young M.A., Dreezy, Dream Doll, and Mulatto. Once these releases helped push Chinese Kitty into the public eye, well, she unleashed her first mixtape, Kitty Bands, in October of 2019. And that was a project that was well enough received that it wound up earning her an invite to Rolling Loud, which happened later that summer. However, once quarantine struck, well, soon afterwards, well, Kitty would have more time than ever to think about her craft. Now, the end result wound up becoming her debut studio album, titled SMD. <laughs> Yeah. So Kitty returned to New York City and worked harder than ever before. With nothing but time on her hands, well, she believes she managed to create the absolute best record she possibly could, and she then named it what she did because demanding that someone suck your, uh, D? <laughs> well, you know, it's basically the most disrespectful thing you can tell someone in NYC, and, uh, well, after everything she had been through to get to this point, well, it was the exact message that she wanted to tell the world. My creative director, we just sat down and we just came up with this album and it's just amazing and i can't wait even I, the whole thing for me is just smd would see release in june of 2021 both top bitch and been poppin would turn into massive successes but chinese kitty's rap career it was still only just getting started now since breaking through into the music industry in a big way in 2021 well chinese kitty has continued to release singles like attitude and boy ain't mine while also being invited to perform at prestigious new york city events like the ball drop in brooklyn at the barclay center there kitty she teamed up with the likes of future and 21 savage to ring in the new year for the city that never sleeps and as the only female headliner on the bill that night well it was a major opportunity for her to show the world what they can expect for her coming in 2023 better yet will she use this chance to shine a spotlight on another up-and-coming female artist from the city i'm talking about maya the dawn and that uh, well they performed the hit telfy in front of thousands of viewers now chinese kitty she's also expanding her business by taking her act international with her recent appearance on english radio personality charlie sloth's fire in the booth series now her segment it might have been filmed in new york city but the international intrigue was enough to send the clip viral shortly after its release no matter how much success she ultimately finds at the end of the day well chinese kitty is simply a person trying to work her way through a complicated industry and she wants other young girls to learn from her experience she told the nocturnal i'm a mom a female rapper an entrepreneur a young boss making her way in a male industry and i'm living my life i want girls to know my story listen to my music and realize you could be a mom and still be a bad bitch i want you to feel good all around i want equal power within the field. I'm not coming to play and I'm not stopping. I'm going to keep going. As for where Chinese Kitty's journey in the rap game ultimately takes her, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. After all, this has been before they're famous. Now, before I leave you guys, I do have a question for you. Given the choice, would you rather be a reality television star or a rapper? For me, I feel like reality television's got a bit of an allure. I mean, you go, you film the show, then you get to watch it at home and you know people are going to watch it. Putting out music seems a little more, you know, maybe the album hits maybe you got a single on there but if you don't it's almost game over so yeah reality tv probably pays less though just my opinion let me know your thoughts in the comments down below